This lesson covers Active Directory domains, trees, forests, and the various domain and forest modes available. A domain is often considered our primary building block. We promote servers to become domain controllers and they're a member of a domain. And that domain contains user accounts, it contains groups, it contains computer objects, organizational units, policies, and it's really a boundary of replication of those objects. It contains a shared security database, that ntds.dit, between all the domain controllers in that domain, enabling any domain controller in a single domain to authenticate any user or computer within there. So all of those domain controllers are a member of this same domain. We also have the concept of trees. Now in the past, prior to Active Directory, you could manually create trust relationships between different domains. However, those domains still had their own separate configurations. They weren't really joined in any way. With Active Directory, when you create a new domain and you specify a parent domain, it then becomes part of that domain's tree. It has a contiguous namespace. So what that means is, if for example, my parent domain here was called savletech.net, the child domain has to have savletech.net in its name. So this could be hr.savletech.net. A child of that domain could be called marketing.hr.savletech.net. It has to be a contiguous namespace within a tree. And all of those domains within a tree have a transitive trust between the parent and the child. What this means is because the trust is transitive, because this domain trusts this parent domain, and this domain trusts its parent, and then this other child, because they're transitive, the trust flows through, which means this domain all the way down here implicitly trusts this domain which means authentication, access to resources, just works. I don't have to create manual trust between all of the domains in a tree. When we join these domains together in a tree, which has to be set when I create the domain, they share that configuration partition, which means they have the same, for example, site hierarchies, the same IP subnets defined, and they have the same schema, the same objects and attributes available. They also now share something called a global catalog, that partial attribute set that's replicated even between separate domains to enable that easy searching. We also have the concept of a forest. Now suppose in my organization, I have my savvletech.net, but I also want savwidgets.com as a separate Active Directory domain. That's not a contiguous namespace. So a forest allows us to actually have different namespaces. These would be a separate tree, a different namespace, but I create that transitive trust at the top of those different namespaces. And again, because it's transitive, it means every domain in that forest implicitly trusts every other domain. Again, access to objects, security, authentication will all work. Because these are all part of the same forest, they also share that schema and configuration partition. So they're all going to be able to communicate and access the same type of information. Again, this joining of a single forest happens when I create a new domain. I can't have separate domains and then merge them together to form one forest. They may have separate schema definitions. It just wouldn't work. Now, I can take separate forests and create a forest trust between them, but they're not considered the same forest. They're still separate forests, but they trust one another. Many times, if one organization acquires another company, they may initially create a forest trust between the separate forests. But over time, they'll actually want to merge or migrate the objects from one forest to one of the other forests. So one company would choose to absorb the other. This is a huge undertaking. You have to migrate all the computer accounts, the user accounts, the groups, the services, the applications, all their data has to be moved over. So it's a very, very complex undertaking, but there are some tools to help in that. When we think about our domains and our forests, we have the concept of these domain controllers. These are servers that store the copy of that database and offer services out to clients. And those servers are running different operating systems. Based on the operating system that's running in those domain controllers, you get different levels of functionality available. For example, if every single domain controller is running Windows Server 2012, then I get the highest level of Active Directory functionality available to me. 
However, that's not always going to be the case. I may have Windows 2003 domain controllers. I may have 2008. And depending on what operating system your domain controllers are running, it's going to change the functionality that's available within the AD. So one thing we do is at a domain level, you can raise the domain functional level. Now, I'm already running at Windows Server 2008 R2, which means I can have Windows Server 2008 R2 and Windows Server 2012 domain controllers in this Active Directory domain. I cannot have a Windows 2008 or a 2003 R2 domain controller if I'm running at 2008 R2 domain functional level. If I now raise my domain functional level to 2012, I can no longer have a 2008 R2 domain controller. And as I raise those levels, they generally add different functionality. For example, if I move to a 2008 R2 forest mode, I then get the recycle bin to enable me to easily undelete objects. But I can't have that functionality until all my domain controllers are running 2008 R2 in the forest. So we can set a domain mode. Again, if you still had 2003 domain controllers, you can't set your domain mode to a higher level. You would have to retire all of those earlier domain controllers before I can raise the domain mode. I also have a forest mode. So if I right click on the root, I can actually raise the forest functional level. Now the forest functional level can never be higher than any of the domains levels that make up that forest. So if I had a single domain that was still running at 2008R2 domain level, I cannot raise the forest to 2012. But because I just raised it, I can now raise my forest to 2012. So now every domain in that forest will be running 2012. And again, this is really designed to help enable new levels of functionality in Active Directory based on when all your domain controllers are updated. The domain and the forest level has no effect on the client, the member servers that are part of that domain. I could be running at Windows Server 2012 domain or forest level and still have, for example, 2003 member servers. They can't be domain controllers, but they can be a member of that domain. It's not impacting who can be a member of the domain. It's purely controlling who can be domain controllers and therefore what the functionality of that server running the DC is to enable those advanced functionalities to really improve the whole AD experience. Make sure you don't raise your domain or forest levels until you're certain there is, for example, no need to have a lower OS version of a domain controller. Because once you raise this, it's really not possible to go backwards. There are some exceptions to that. There were some changes made in 2008 R2, for example, that you can go backwards to 2008, provided you have not enabled any functionality that required the 2008 R2 level. But the best way to think of this is a one-way operation. Once you raise the domain or forest level, you cannot go back.